Hello and welcome to the Hobby Corner. My name is Kev and in today's episode we are looking at issue 4 of the Imperium magazine. So once again this one has been sponsored by Ross Graham from Frohammer. So big shout out to you mate. Thank you so much for purchasing this issue for me. Um, and uh, yeah, if you want to be one of those awesome people too, then just donate in the, the little uh, Streamlabs donation button down below or you can uh, send a message to me and arrange it otherwise but essentially we'll get a whole episode sponsored by you reviewing an issue and you get immortalized forever on the internet so it's pretty darn cool so let's dive in shall we this is issue 4 899 um, 10.99 if you're going for the premium stuff but that's another thing. You get a nice little pot of lead belcher. You can never have too much of that. You also got your bases for that. And you get three Scorpic destroyers and the uh, the Canoptic Plasma Site, which is this little dude here, who um, basically jacks these up into a murderous frenzy. Um, I've already had some of these from the Indominus box and I absolutely love the kit. It's really, really cool. Um, there's a lot of character to them, which is kind of funny for murderous android from the 41st millennium, but yeah, I really like it. So those are cracking uh, minis. Now onto the issue itself. Well, it comes with a full-sized battle mat, and of course it's double-sided. Let me just do a super zoom. By that I just mean pick the camera up. So that is one side and as you can see we will be having armoured containers eventually which you'd put in those spaces, um, ammo boxes, fuel dumps, that sort of thing. And on the other side we have an alternative which looks like it's for a larger board once you uh, get further into the series and you start playing those bigger games. So that's pretty cool. Onto the issue itself. So it says Scorpic Destroyers attack, play, uh, painting with Lead Belcher and your biggest battle yet. So let's have a look inside. We have Scorpic Destroyers, deranged Necron Killers. What an entrance, eh? Um, so it says many Necrons have descended into madness, but few are as utterly insane as the Scorpic Destroyers. They have abandoned all ambition and hope and instead they seek only to destroy organic life. They have had their bodies modified by cryptic engineers to make them lethal, uh, sorry, lethally efficient killing machines. Necronobles often use Scorpic destroyers as shock troops, but they do not trust them. They fear the destroyer's madness to be infectious, and some even worry about who the destroyers will turn upon when all their organic foes are slain. Nut jobs. <laughs> and then of course you've got the Canoptic Plasma site. Um, they remove corrupted programming from their fellow Necrons and inject it into the minds of the destroyers. This enhances the destroyers insanity and drives their mi mindless slaughter to new heights at the risk of utterly destroying them. Cool! So they've got their big uh, hyperphase blades, um, cool looking weirdness and of course Got that dude injecting them with error codes essentially. <laughs> um, again, we have a battle record as well, which is pretty cool. Really personalizing this, um, the whole campaign and everything. And then we move on to, let's see, what names have they got? Flesh Shredders, Bone Collectors, Death Heralds. Okay. <laughs> All right, um, and then of course we move on to this, the creation of a space marine. So, creating a space marine is no easy task. Every one of these superhuman warriors is a product of agonizing surgery, psycho indoctrination, and decades of brutal training. It is a process so horrific that few survive. Such are the sacrifices mankind must make to defend the Imperium. That is some really awesome uh, artwork by the way um, it's the first time seeing that so yeah so um, essentially uh, recruits are usually picked up as kids um, they go through rigorous trials a lot of the time 
a lot of those uh, potential recruits die in those trials. Those that survive and are deemed worthy will then go on to being trained, um, steadily being implanted with more organs um, called gene seed uh, that helps stimulate growth and bulk them up. They get surgery to get the black carapace on, which um, connects to the entire body. It's put under the skin and then it connects to the armor later on. Then they get into like scout phase where they're almost there, but they're not quite there and they're just perfecting the art of being a space marine. And then you have becoming a space marine uh, in the Astartes. And then after that, you go through the Primaris Rubicon um, to become Primaris space marine. And it's like, there's so many more steps now. And that you know, like each step, you're you're sort of rolling the dice on whether or not you're going to survive. So um, that's that. So to find an aspirant, there you go. Um, it mentions about Primarchs, um, how they they're essentially genetically engineered uh, generals uh, from his own genes that he designed to sort of rule in his stead and also sort of fuel the um the space marine legions so um many all the space marines they can trace their lineage to a specific primark and um there's they each one has different traits because of that uh you got apothecaries who help look after the gene seed to take it from the wound uh from the dead and it gets recycled and then the gene seed is the raw genetic material used um, to create the organs implanted within the aspirants. So there you go. Then we also got more on the warp destinations and demons. The warp is a blah, 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 blah. the warp is a dimension of pure energy that exists outside the fabric of reality, known as the Empyrean, the Immaterium, and the Soul, uh, the Sea of Souls, amongst other ominous names. It is at once utterly essential to the existence of the Imperium and the most deadly threat to humanity. So all these spaceships, they have these things called Gala Shields. It protects them from these sentient beings and the madness of the warp getting into the ship, getting into the minds and the bodies of the shipmates. Sometimes it fails, then all hell goes loose. It is pretty scary stuff. Then you got the Astronomicon, which is a beacon of pure psychic light that is seen in the Imperium. Um, sorry, in the warp, and is used by navigators to um, find their way around. Um, you have denizens of the warp, so demons and weird ass creatures and stuff. Here's the navigators, who are a type of psychics uh, which are sanctioned by the Imperium. They have like a third eye thing going on so they can see into the warp. Um, without going mad so they're like genetically engineered to be like that and then thousands and thousands of years have existed um, and then you got this stuff blackstone it, it's a mysterious obsidian looking substance that can be used to enhance or negate the power of the warp in the region of space known as the pariah nexus the necrons have used blackstone to create a network of towering pylons that appear to hold back the energies of the immaterium. Um, they render warp travel and communication, and uh, yeah, they make things pretty tricky. So they are pretty cool. Then you also got how to build the Canoptic Plasma Sites and the, uh, the Scorpic Destroyers. So um, they might seem a little fiddly, but they're not that fiddly. There's some like twisty turny bits, but I like how it says twist it in like that, twist that round and then pop it in. So it's a bit more clearer actually than the original instructions on how to build these. And then they look pretty cool. And then you get some paint on them. So you get your Rune Lord Brass on there. And then you get your lead belcher on there. Sweet, so we're down to two paints. And then, of course, use the lead belcher to touch up on details for the assault intercessors and the uh, the lieutenant. And then we go on to the playthrough. So, destroyers awaken. Having already awakened a trio of scorpic destroyers, a canoptic plasma site moves to bring these uh, more of these devastating killing machines to life. 
groovy. So you're using that larger board. That's going to be crazy. So you've got Primus Lieutenant and three Assault Intercessors against three Scorpic Destroyers and a Plasma Sight. Um, okay. We already know what they got to do. they got to destroy each other. And here we have the updated War Scrolls. So the Primus Lieutenant, he's now got a weapon skill instead of ballistic skill. So he's not shooting in this turn, uh, in this game. It's all combat. So they all have their weapon skill. Okay. Oh, that's cool. So he gets four attacks, which is crazy. Uh, he's got a master crafted power sword. Um, so I'm sure we'll find out if that means anything in this game yet, or if um, it's just a placeholder. And then it walks you through there. So, you know, charges, um, attacking, killing stuff off, all that good stuff. And then rinse and repeat. And then it says, um, you just keep on going. And then you swap players. Um, that's it, essentially. Um, so, issue five is the limited edition to this magazine series, uh, Primus Captain. And then issue six, which is going to sell out fast, is the easy to build Primus Aggressors with the Flamer Gauntlets and the base paint of Abaddon Black. So um, yeah, that was a pretty cool thing. Um, I can't wait to properly read through it as well. Or, you know, toilet reading. So um, let me know in the comments what you think on that issue um, and its value. Do you think it's worth it for these? I do. I really do think it's worth it for those. You get your little pot of paint as well. Um, and yeah, if you want to help the channel out, don't forget to subscribe, hit that like button, do all that fantastic stuff that helps uh, support the channel um, amongst the algorithm. And if you want to help the channel out even more, then there are plenty of ways to do so in the description below like ordering issues from Forbidden Planet, using that link, uh, going to Enema Games and ordering all your hobby supplies, joining the Buy Me A Coffee membership, which this fantastic dude has done, um, where you get yourself some exclusive perks and it's for as little as two pound a month, or you can sponsor an episode by getting buying an issue for me. So um, thank you very much for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Big love to you. Peace.